Dive in the deep end, it's time to defend your movie. Oh, hello, friends. Welcome to this week's episode of Defending Your Movie. I am your host, Jeremy Meyer. Uh, well, it is the last week of October, uh, the last week of Bond Month, as I guess I've been doing here. Um, so I said at the beginning of the month that we were going to bookend this month with Bond movies because the new James Bond movie came out this month and I it was the movie I was most excited for in 2020 that ended up getting pushed back because of the pandemic and it finally got a release date. And so when I invited my guest on to do a Bond movie, we decided to talk about the movies that were each other's least favorites and we kind of uh, flip-flopped and we're able to look at, you know, each other's least favorite Bond movie from a different perspective. So at the beginning of the month, we covered my least favorite, Thunderball. And this week, we are covering Alan's least favorite, which my guess is Alan Kessinger returning again. Uh, his least favorite film, Diamonds Are Forever. Uh, which to me is a fun little, fun little romp of a Bond film. Now, I should point out, at the time of recording this episode, I had not seen the new Bond movie yet. Uh, as of recording this intro, however, I have. Uh, I finally went and saw No Time to Die in the theater. It's the first movie I've seen in the theater since Fast 9, only second movie I've seen during the pandemic. Uh, there was like five or six other people in the theater. Uh, so pretty pretty quiet experience, which I like. Um, but I hope the movie does well. It's been reviewing pretty well. Uh, and I have to say, I, I really enjoyed it. Uh, it is not a perfect film, but it is a perfect send off for the Daniel Craig era of Bond. I think if you are a Bond fan, you'll probably like it. If you have liked the Daniel Craig movies, if you've loved some of them, I think you'll be a fan of this one. It's, it's a really good, really fun movie. And best of all, like Daniel Craig is kind of giving it his all and leaving it all on the table in this one. So I think it was really good. <clears throat> um, I I haven't seen a lot of new movies this year, but as I'm recording this, I'm actually uh, um, halfway through Dune at the moment, which I should be finishing right now. Um, and I just saw Halloween Kills this weekend. And, um, you know, I saw the James Bond movie like a few weeks ago. So I'm, I'm trying to wrap up a lot of the 2021 movies here, but I I was super excited for Bond last year, and currently, as I have not finished Dune, and I still got some other movies to see, I will say No Time to Die currently sits as my favorite movie of the year. Now, I definitely think there are a couple movies I still want to watch that might take that one down, but um, currently, as it sits, No Time to Die, my number one movie of 2021, which is nice, because... It was my most anticipated of 2020, so, and honestly, I'd have to look back at what were my 2020 favorite movies. It honestly might have been this if I had seen it when it was supposed to come out, but I digress. As it is, it did not come out last year, but here we are, October, the month of Bond, and weird that I did not have the foresight to do any horror films, <laughs> because why would you do horror films in the month of Halloween? Who knows? But, um... Yeah, I don't know. I, I just didn't do any... I haven't really had many horror movies on here, but uh, spoiler alert, I think we will be talking about that Halloween movie on this episode. Um, yeah, so I'm not going to talk much about that, but I did see Halloween Kills, and I have some thoughts. But um, we're talking about Bond this episode, so without further ado, let's get the plugs out of the way and get into Diamonds Are Forever. So, follow us on social media at Defending Movie on Twitter and Instagram. Follow us on Patreon at patreon.com slash Defending Movie. And check out our merch store. Uh, I just uploaded a new design, a uh, Matrix-inspired design, kind of a similar one that I had for my last podcast, but now for this podcast. So be sure to go to belowthecollar.com slash Defending Your Movie and check out our new t-shirt. Uh, maybe pick one up before you go see The Matrix. If you... We'll, we'll do this. If you buy a shirt and you go see The Matrix and take a picture and post it with the shirt, I will send you one free shirt of your choosing from ProWrestlingTees.com. So, we'll do that. 
buy it, buy a shirt, go to the, go to a movie theater and see it. If you send me the photo, I'll send you a free T-shirt. Um, well, you know, we'll start with. If you buy the Matrix shirt and go see the Matrix, you know what? Well, we might make this a regular thing. So be on the lookout for more opportunities to win a free wrestling t-shirt if if uh, that's your jam. Or maybe I can even do a, a shirt from below the collar. There's a lot of other really cool stuff on there. But uh, yeah. Oh, also want to point out, uh, I was reading a book recently. And it is a, it's a film book that I think a lot of people will like. I just want to look up the author's name to make sure I get it right. You know, I read a lot of film books and um I'm always looking for more stuff to help me with like my writing or my film perspectives. So, I, recently I was just reading a book, The Films of Steven Spielberg by Michael Jowls or J- Jowls. It's J O L L S. Uh available on Amazon, but it's a fun little retrospective look at uh the the filmography of Steven Spielberg and you know, one of the greatest directors of our lifetime, but uh, it, it's been a fun book, and I'm actually thinking about reaching out to the author to see if he uh, might want to be on the show, so keep an eye out for that. But without further ado, let's get into Diamonds Are Forever! Uh, sorry, man. Uh, I'm happy to welcome you back good. for some more James Bond talk. It's good to be back. This is this has been really fun. Thanks for having me. Absolutely, I always love having you. You're a fun guest. <laughs> but uh, it's it's James Bond month, mm-hmm. and at, at this point, at the beginning of the month, we talked about Thunderball, mm-hmm. and now we're going to talk about my choice for the month, which is Diamonds Are Forever. And can I reiterate that I am very happy to be here. <laughs> okay, so you are notoriously not a fan of this. You one. know, okay, so before before we did this, yes, was not a fan. Um I think from what I remember, it's this movie just it's represented such a big tonal shift from the previous Sean Connery films, which, you know, these movies are ridiculous, but like uh, Doctor No, Goldfinger from Russia with Love, uh, Thunderball, and You Only Live Twice. I mean that that had a particular, um, uh, uh, very specific timber, um, a pitch to it, as it were. Um, yes. And whereas Diamonds Are Forever, it was you know sh- they got Sean Connery back. Uh, they paid him like three million dollars or, or some ridiculous amount. Uh, One point two five. Yeah. I was actually, which at the time I think was the highest anyone had ever been yes. paid for a movie. Yeah. And um, it just seemed to me like this was the perfect shoe in to the Roger Moore years, which those are movies I just cannot stand anymore. Um, <laughs> and so literally I felt and like, I, you know, I, I love doing this. I love I've loved doing this for you. But I literally kind of felt like I was going to be drag kicking and screaming to this. And um, I watched it the other day. And I think maybe I'm a little turned around on it. All right, that's what I was hoping to hear. Um, I mean, I still there's still parts of it. Like I think the movie, you know, this is this is stuff we'll get into. But I, I, I the first half of this movie, it, like the first act of this movie, is great. The second act, yeah. when he gets into Vegas, it's like eh, okay. And then the the beginning of the third act, where kind of like things are laid out on the table, I'm like, oh, okay, all right, okay. Um, so yeah, I, I gotta say, like, I'm a, I'm of a different mind now. Yeah, I, uh, so did you see, it's cause I, I am, I know you weren't like watching these when they came mm-hmm. out, cause I don't think we were even born yet, but, um, when did you, did you see them in order at this point? Like, yes. did you see Honor, Majesty, Secret Service before this yes. one? Yes. So what, what I did when GoldenEye came out. That was like that was when there was like this big James Bond renaissance because like it was it was the first movie in a good long while because Living Daylights that had to have been what like eighty eight eighty nine um, and then Golden Eye came out well License to Kill came out uh, eighty nine okay uh, that was and then it was 
95 when GoldenEye right. came out. There was a big gap yeah. in there. And I think because GoldenEye did really well that there was this sudden kind of big popularity for James Bond again. And so um, UA, they re-released all of the films on VHS, and I and I had all of them. And I was... Is that when they had, like, the the black boxes with the gold lettering and stuff? N- not the ones that I had. They were just, like, selling, like, the individual tapes. Um, and it was just, like, the same kind of white text font uh, on the spines for, for each one. Um, not, nothing yeah. really, nothing like the new recent releases that they have now, which I think are really slick. Um, but yeah, these just generic covers, like not even the movie posters, you know, just very generic kind of covers. Yeah. So, and yes, had been watching them through and yes, I had watched on her Majesty's secret service and I hated that because Sean Connery was, wasn't <laughs> in it. Um, and so it was like, okay, I got to get through this and then, Hey, Sean Connery comes back. This is great. And then it was like what is this movie? (laughs) (laughs) Well, it's so obvious that he doesn't want to be there. Mm -hmm. And, you know, so I think on her Majesty's secret service is a great movie with a horrible actor playing (laughs) James Bond. Like to me, George Lazenby is at the bottom of the list when it comes to Bond actors. Um, But like what I, what I, so my encounter with this movie was similar. I was marathoning them in order and I was aware of, like, the stories behind the movies at this point, because this was only, like, five years ago that I did this. <laughs> and um, I, like, I, I, Honor Majesty's Secret Service was kind of tough to get through, mostly because of Lazenby. But when I look back on it, I was like, like, the events in that movie are really good. Mm-hmm. And this one, I think the reason I enjoyed it so much, my initial viewing, was because it was such a break. Right. Uh, in the marathon of that tone because I, I literally was doing them uh, like one every two days because mm-hmm. I was I was watching them on my commutes and like finishing them when I got home. So I was like watch half of it on the train on the way to work and back and then finish it at home and then the next day just roll into the next right. one. Mm-hmm. And by the time I got to this, because this is what, like the seventh movie, seventh or eighth movie down already, mm-hmm. I, I think I just really enjoyed the goofiness of this movie because right. it is really goofy. Yeah. Um, I was noticing watching it this time around that this feels most like an Austin Powers movie yeah. <laughs> without actually like being a parody. Right. This the, to me it it feels very like this is if it wasn't Sean Connery like it, it, in in a in a different timeline this would be a Roger Moore movie and it would be like yeah of course it is. Because, because, yeah, you're right. Because it's it's silly, it's goofy, it's uh, it's kind of it, it's it's less debonair, less we're going to exotic locations, less kind of you know big manipulative plots to hey we're going to Vegas, hey we're using diamonds for a space laser, and um. <laughs> You know, here's Sean Connery in the first 10 minutes of the movie, basically severely beating up or killing people. (laughs) Oh, the opening of the movie is fantastic, especially like the whole thing of they're not showing his face because, you know, they're they're going for the the big reveal that Connery's back, Mm -hmm. you know. And just watching this faceless person just beat up all these random people. Strangles a woman with her bikini top, you know. Yeah, which, you know, part of this is the whole idea of it being in Vegas, but this feels like the sleaziest. Oh, most certainly. (laughs) It it has the most skin, I think. There's a lot of girls in bikinis. um, And HD is... Uh, I guess kind to this movie <laughs> if you're a if you're a young person and you see things there, that you maybe didn't see in the original there is version. There's certainly a scene that there is clarity through sheer fabric that if you look real good, then you'll uh, it's it's almost shocking that um, uh, what you can see. <laughs> yeah, and like I, you know, I it's just back then the clarity wasn't so good, mm-hmm. and you wouldn't notice. Like, oh, you can totally see that girl's nipple mm-hmm, through her shirt. Mm-hmm. Yeah. And I guess that happens in some of the movies in the like opening title sequences as well when they got up res to HD. Right. <laughs> it's just something you don't think about. <laughs> but yeah, like I th- I would I would definitely put money down that I think Bond maybe like has sex in this movie more than any other Bond mm-hmm. film. 
and like yeah there are just half naked women all over this movie and i guess it it fits with it being set in Vegas yeah. of all places. Yeah, and like there, it's got that Vegas sleaze. Um, every time they showed a sequence where um, the characters are walking through the casino, like I, I wrinkled my nose because it's like I could smell the cigarettes. I, oh, I could absolutely. smell the cigarettes and the desperation. Um, As somebody who went to Vegas for the first time uh, two years ago, oh, like just no. looking at it, it's a whole different perspective. This yeah, time. yeah, yeah. Um, that being said, that being said, I have to say again, watching this, and I, I don't know if, I don't know what, but holy cow, like Jill St. John makes a total like incredible <laughs> entrance in this movie. Like she, she is, is, she amazing is in this gorgeous. Movie. Um, and for as ridiculous as her character is, so does so does um, Lana Wood. Um, in like the five minutes that she's in this movie. Um, yeah, but yeah, no, Jill St. John, like she, I, she kind of went up on my list for, for, for Bond girls. Cause she, she makes a real, she makes an amazing entrance. I kind of, you know, her, her character kind of grates on me towards the end. Just, I, I think a lot she's of, she's a really silly character, yeah. but she's like a beautiful woman. Yeah. Yeah. So it's this really weird thing. And yeah, you're right. Like in her entrance, you're just like, Oh, look at this like woman involved in this diamond smuggling. And it's like this beautiful, almost like femme fatale like character. Mm. And then she goes on to have some of the most ridiculous mm-hmm. lines in the movie. Mm-hmm. Like there, there are two quotes I always think of, which is "blow up your pants." Yep. <laughs> which, what does that even? She mean? She says that to a kid, no less. <laughs> yeah, and then that whole sequence when they're at the gas station or whatever, yes. she's trying to distract the cars. Like everything she says there is just ridiculous. Which I mean, like product of the time too, because it's like, oh yeah, they have like, you know, they've got you know the the stamps to get gas and all this stuff like what is she even talking about like it certainly does not play today but um yeah no she's she is ridiculous (laughs) (laughs) yeah like every time i'm always just fascinated by like the degradation of her character and just like to the point at the end where Bond like slips yep, the I... tape in her underwear, <laughs> he just gives her the sly like bitch. Yep. <laughs> like, like Connery's just not giving a fuck. In yes, this, and it's kind of makes it more. Fun. It comes. It comes off. Yeah, he definitely comes off like, hey, guess who just got paid one point five million dollars to be here? Um, you know this this fifty year old man with these like gorgeous young women. Um, mm. You know. I, and and I, I was reading up as as I am wont to do. I was reading up trivia for the movie, and it was funny to hear that like Sean Connery and a bunch of other people were like, "Yeah, dude, we're in Vegas. Um, we didn't sleep. We just gambled all day and of went golfing all weekend, and just kind of living it up, you know, in that old Vegas uh, uh, lifestyle." Um, but yeah, I mean. You know, it, it makes me wonder if they were like, okay, we'll pay you one point five million dollars and we're sending you to Vegas and be like, okay, all right, <laughs> yeah. I mean, he, he so yeah, he got a fat paycheck and he got a two picture deal with I think it was United Artisan mm-hmm. that was involved mm-hmm. with this, and like they he literally just used all that money to open a charity. Yeah, like <laughs> he, it was one of those things he just didn't want to do it and like so he just gave them this you know, high salary. And they were just like, okay, money's no option Mm -hmm. because like, I I don't even think, um, honor Majesty's secret service was like, like, I don't think it was a, it definitely wasn't a bomb. Like no James Bond movie has ever. Right. But, uh, well, I guess we'll, we'll see what happens with this new one. Again, those Roger Moore ones, I'd be shocked if they didn't bomb because those are terrible. But, um, uh, yeah, no, I mean, it's, and yeah, I was kind of surprised too. Cause I, I went to see, okay, how did this movie do? And, and it did real well. It, it reviewed yeah. and, and did well at the box office. So. Yeah. Like, I, so I just looked on her majesty's secret service made like $80 million and, um, you only live twice, which came before it was at 111. Mm-hmm. So it went down a little bit and then this one made like 117 or and something. That kind of like makes that. sense because if you're saying that, Hey, you want to go see that new bond movie? Oh yeah. I love Sean Connery. Well, no, he's not in it. And like, well, yeah, I want to see it, but it's, you know, the only, the only reason I give that movie the time of day is because it's, it's like my mom's absolute favorite Bond movie. Um, but yeah, it was just like, 
coming off of you only live you only live twice losing connery seeing this new guy um you know it kind of makes <clears throat> sense that it probably it didn't do as financially well yeah and i think it reviewed pretty well but just like the box office wasn't as strong yeah. and then this one you know it ticked up because you get connery mm-hmm. back and i'm sure that was all over the advertising mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. um but like it's this movie just has such a wild cast of yeah. characters and it's got a vibe too it's got a like i had i remember like not really paying attention to the plot back then it's just like oh something to do i with... honestly don't really pay attention to it now right well like, but the plot kind of doesn't matter but that's the thing it's just like like i didn't pay attention to it then and this time i like really paid attention it's like because i before rewatching it like i had i had just like scenes in my head where you had these two assassins who are like trying to smuggle diamonds and i'm like <laughs> why are they doing this and why are they meeting up with the old lady and all that and like this time i like decided to really pay attention to it i'm like oh okay there's a reason for all this i mean it's it's flimsy and at the end of the day yeah you're not really going to bond movies for plot but still it's it's nice to be able to kind of like finally understand what is going on why things the way they are why the characters are there um what you know so yeah it, it it's it's interesting because this time it made a lot more sense <laughs> yeah like you know going in for another watch it's easier to like and for me i kind of did the opposite of like oh well i i paid attention to that stuff last time mm-hmm. so this time i was kind of just letting the movie wash over me and um i did notice like as you said the second act of this movie is a bit of a slog mm-hmm. Um, like once you're kind of in Vegas, it, t- it takes a little bit to like, kind of keep it interesting and keep it going. Yeah. But like, I don't, it just, a lot of this movie just feels like a joke. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. And, um, like the whole, you killed James Bond. <laughs> and, like what is going on in this movie? Mm-hmm. Is, the, that's kind of why I love the it. whole abrupt ending to the, one of the most tense bond escapes where he's in the coffin in the cremator. Um, yeah. and it just, ends and he's able to just like walk away after adjusting his suit and after taking all this money um yeah it's just it's it's bizarre it's really bizarre (laughs) i would also say the ending of the movie is very abrupt as well Mm -hmm. where which i i remember um the first time I watched it, I actually really enjoy the kind of fight on the oil platform. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I was like, oh, this like this is kind of my favorite stuff in some of these older Bond movies is when it just turns into like a war right, between yeah. like bad guys yeah. and like the Secret Service. Because yeah. um, even in the last movie we talked about, Thunderball has that. It's just <laughs> all happening underwater <laughs> and is not as exciting. <laughs> But in this one, they have, like, helicopters shooting missiles, and, like, he, he's swinging Blofeld on this crane, and then it just cuts to a cruise ship, like, immediately. Yeah. And it, it's just like, oh, that's done now. <laughs> Sean Connery said he was tired and didn't want to do it anymore, and uh, he left yeah. the set. Yeah. But, I mean, as far as, as far as, like, you know, big battle final locales, an oil rig is certainly fascinating. Like, it's interesting. It's, it's, it's perilous, yeah. you know. Um, but, um, but yeah. And then there's the, just that little coda on the yacht, um, with Mr. Kid and Mr. Mr. Wind Mr. and Mr. Kid, yeah. which, which I love these like characters. I, again, back in the day, I had no idea. Like I, I didn't really think much about these movies, especially since I like immediate had an immediate, immediate dislike, uh, for diamonds are forever. But again, watching it now, like, Hey, here's a bond movie with like, queer characters and they don't play it off as a big kind of like they're not like these kind of mincing characters yeah. they're menacing like they it, and for for the most part like you're seeing these two characters and like straight up there's a sort of like are like are are what is up like are these guys. guys are these guys queer are they just being quirky and i mean there's there's just that one sequence in the airplane when he says that hey uh you know uh, she looks, you know, pretty attractive for a woman, and he kind of gives her a they look, like share a yeah. look. But like, you know, um, again, like for them to kind of portray those characters who they are, and not just treat it as one big, like, gag. I mean, it's kind of progressive. Yeah, in a weird way, it is. I mean, yeah, it's kind of 
just heavily implied. Yeah. Like, you definitely watch this movie and, like, oh, there's something up with these guys. But And I want to say if the actors have even said they have no idea. Well, like they, okay, so, again, trivia. Uh, both both the actors, which one of them was a jazz musician. He was a bass player. Um, and the other one is Crispin Glover's dad. I had, I had yeah, no Bruce idea. Glover. Yeah, Glover. Um, yeah, once you once you know and you look at that face, exactly, totally exactly. But yeah, they had they had said that like in an interview, like in the '90s, they said, "Oh yeah, no, when we were, you know, we had convinced Sean Connery that you know these characters were like incredibly homosexual, uh, and and like the the actors themselves." And he said that he was on um, an airplane and he was flirting with a stewardess. And on that same plane was Sean Connery, and I can hear it, like, and I even said it when I read it, but he had said that um, he had someone come up to him with a Scottish action say, you son of a bitch. And it was, and it was <laughs> Sean Connery on the same plane. <laughs> That's hilarious. <laughs> Uh, also, Bruce Glover, notoriously kind of an asshole on set and was always stealing the other guy, Putter Smith's lines. Oh, really? Because he wasn't really an actor and Glover was. Oh, so Glover was kind of overstepping. Yeah. Um, there's there's another podcast. I don't think it runs anymore, but the episodes are probably still available called I Was There Too. Mm-hmm. And it's um, what's his name? He He produces the Conan podcast now. Uh, Matt Gorley, oh, okay. he would just interview people who were kind of like bit parts mm. in movies oh, that's cool. and stuff. And that was he's he's a huge Bond fan, so that was one of his Bond gets was a uh, Putter Smith who that's was awesome. Mr. Kid, <laughs> and he he talked a lot about yeah. that. Well, that that sucks, but now I like I have a renewed love for those characters. Yeah, like, I, I watch this movie the same way I watch, like, a Fast and Furious movie. Mm-hmm. I mean, obviously, the action is not to the same degree, but they're just goofy and f- goofy fun. Yeah. And that's kind of what I like about it. And I think, you know, the Vegas setting and the the weird characters, like, you have Jimmy, the guy who invented Jimmy Dean's sausage <laughs> in this movie, or the brand, anyway. Yeah. And yeah, you, like you it's, have, it's just uh, such this weird cast. You, you've got James Bond riding a moon buggy across the desert. Yeah, in this like, why are they filming a moon <laughs> thing here? And why are these guys moving like they are on the moon while they're chasing them? That is my most favorite thing out of that entire scene. Is yeah, you've got the two guys who are like walking around. They're simulated in gravity, and like here comes James just running across the stage. You know, yeah, followed by the guards, like, and just like, what the hell? <laughs> they're yelling at him like stop him and they're just like bouncing back and forth like what is happening god yeah this movie is so weird but yeah and like but again i kind of like i was really into the first act the whole like kind of diamond stuff and again it's 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 setting up a really interesting uh premise because you have you have this guy saying, oh, yeah, we, we mine all of our diamonds down in Africa, you know, carefully neglecting the whole blood diamonds thing. Um, but, like, we have, <laughs> Very carefully. you know, we have all this stuff. We have all the security. and it's, it's perfect system. And everybody is so, so good to keep up all the security. And you're literally watching as people are smuggling diamonds out of the mine and uh, giving them to a dentist who's paying these guys, who's then shipping the diamonds off to one place or another. Um and like it's 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 intrigue, you know. It's it's a it's a very yeah. interesting smuggling operation. And then you and, and on, I like how they show it as they're explaining yeah, it. Yeah, like that's neat. as step by step as they're going through, it's, they're you know editing along with. They it. don't treat it like oh my god, the big revelation is that oh, this this is a smuggling operation, and it's not in the up and up. It's like you know, you would expect to kind of see that as a big reveal when like who cares? That's not the point of the movie. The point is. Like they're on, like the authorities are onto this ring and they're trying to shut it down. That's why they're killing all these people. It's not just indiscriminate, like, you know, kill the messenger kind of thing. It's just like that you've got these two guys who are basically settling up all these loose ends. Why? We don't know until the big reveal that, you know, who Blofeld, who we thought had died at the beginning of the movie. For the second time. For the second time is still alive. Um, And now he has clones. (laughs) <laughs> yeah or plastic, yeah, plastic which, surgery alterations of other people which i'm gonna say something that is maybe a very controversial opinion 
I really like Charles Gray as Blofeld. No, he's good. He was really good. I had forgotten that he plays one of the characters in uh, You Only Live Twice. But um, yeah, no, he's good. I, I liked him. I like him much better than Donald Pleasance. That's for sure. I and I think a lot of people like Telly Savalas from Honor Majesty's Secret Service, but oh, that's right. Yeah. I always just thought that portrayal was weird, mm-hmm. and I never liked. And this, I guess, is by nature of they did the books out of order. Right. But the fact that uh, Blofeld and Bond had met, and you only live twice, but then in um, Honor Majesty's Secret Service, don't seem to know what each other look mm-hmm. like. But I guess it's because they stuck to the books, but they did the books out of order. Right. But, like, in the movies, it was always, like, weird continuity-wise. Well, again, Honor Majesty's Secret Service is a weird movie, so, you know. It is. <laughs> like, I, I think it's really good, but that whole middle section where Bond's pretending to be, like, this other guy mm-hmm. is, like, just a very strange part of that mm-hmm. movie. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but, yeah, like, I like Charles Gray, and, like, I, I, I like how the movie goes from, you know, you kind of get the Blofeld thing out of the way in the beginning, which leads to one of my favorite uh, Bernard Lee M moments yeah. where James Bond is out there avenging the death of his wife. And then when he's done, he gets <laughs> back and M is like chastising him. Right. He's like, oh, well, now maybe we can get some honest work out of you. It's like this guy was just out chasing down the world's most notorious terrorist right. and like allegedly killed him. And you're mad about it. <laughs> Yeah, like yeah, Bernard Lee is just such a good like like pissed off. M. I, Bernard Lee was always my favorite M. I I was always a uh, partial to Dame Judi Dench, mm-hmm. but I am actually a big fan of uh, what's his name that's currently doing it. Um, Ralph Fiennes. Oh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Like I th- I think he's doing a great job. That's cool. That's cool. He can do no wrong. I like Ray Fiennes. Yeah. Oh, he's always amazing. Yeah. Um, also, Desmond Luan as Ellen as Q, just always robbing Vegas. Always, <laughs> always the best. Um, but yeah, just that. Yeah, uh, I love that. He was, that's his biggest contribution to the film is he's got this little thing that lets him cheat at the slots. It's a very key yeah. Thing. Which <laughs> I think yeah he he only that's like he has like one scene in this movie and then that little mm-hmm. bit yeah like, he's got the bit with the, the fingerprint and then yeah <laughs> yeah like I I I always. Am bummed when we don't have a scene where Q is literally like dishing out gadgets mm-hmm. and instead just kind of showing up to explain something. Right. And it's um, oh, it's funny to see the evolution of that like element because uh, the first time you see him is in From Russia with Love and it's a very no nonsense. Here's your attache case. Here's where the knife comes out. Here's where you have like your gold bullion or whatever. Um, here is yeah. here's your uh, the smoke grenade shaped as a deodorant. Okay, bye, see ya. And now it's like, you know, uh, just because it's so fresh in my mind. Like when you know, Goldeneye, like an entire like section of that film is devoted to like let's yeah. show all the gadgets, let's do crazy stuff with the gadgets, and you know, the crazier the better. Here's a Lotus that can you know go underwater, and um, you know the <laughs> the classic. Uh, um, you know, the, the, um, garrote in the, from the watch stuff, you know, it's, it's, yeah. it's become a staple, like just, just as like, you know, okay, what's the new hot car that's going to be advertised in this Bond movie? It's like, what is Q going to do? <laughs> yeah, I will, I think I'll go on record and say, I think Q and Brosnan have like the best scenes. Oh, together. absolutely. Like, I think all the Q scenes in the Brosnan movies are my yes. favorite. Yeah, hands down. And I think those two just had really great chemistry. Like, mm-hmm. they seemed like they were probably really good friends on set. Mm-hmm. And, like, you know, I th- was it Goldeneye where he picks up the sandwich? He's like, that's yeah. my lunch. <laughs> and uh, The World Is Not Enough has, like, one of my favorite cold opens where he steals Q's, like, boat. Yes. <laughs> and he's like, oh, that was my vacation yes. package or whatever. <laughs> Like, yeah, like, Desmond Luo and, like, there are a couple Bond movies where he is just so underutilized, and this is definitely one of them. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, but, like, he, you know, he's you, he's there, though. Like, you, you get to see him, and the scenes that, at least, at least the one with the slot machines is, like, you know, that's a nice kind of, like, 
you know, okay, we don't have him for a gadget scene, but at least can we kind of get him in? Can we get him on board with the inherent goofiness of this movie? You know, and what's goofier than seeing an elephant win in a slot machine? It's seeing Q <laughs> use, use his uh, genius to find ways to hack all these machines. Yeah. And um, Jill St. John... Uh, or Tiffany Case, her character's name. She like bumps into him, just calls him Mister Q, mm-hmm. and is just like so concerned. Like, am I getting arrested after this? <laughs> like, there's just this whole little bit of the movie where she's like, I don't know where I should be because I might go to jail. Right. <laughs> oh man. Which yeah, that's definitely like kind of when her character starts sliding a bit is like after it's revealed that who he who Bond actually is. Yeah, yeah, and like there, there's a. You know, because they they kind of prop her up as being this like fiery independent woman who can hold her own and and can tussle with the best of them, um, and it's not until like she uh, like they're oh why are we in the bridal suite? She starts talking yeah. all breathlessly, and then they get and Felix shows up, and she's she's like suggestively covered in this bearskin rug or whatever, and it's like they they completely like break down her character and 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 like and it's never really never really feels clear that like oh she's just kind of putting up this act it just kind of feels like well james bond has tamed her and now she's this you know she's just kind of this like you know hanging onto his leg through that entire scene and it just it, it rubs me the wrong way um, well, you know, he famously turned a lesbian in right. Goldfinger. Yeah. yeah, that is true. That is true. That, that James Bond is uh, <laughs> very powerful with the women. Oh, uh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you know, mm. some of our favorite movies don't always hold up 100%. He, he practically rapes that poor woman. I mean, in just that movie, yeah. yeah. Gosh, it's coming back now. Oh, man. Also, he just like completely backhands Tiffany Case in this right, movie yeah, at one point. Yeah. Like once things start getting serious, he just hits her like <laughs> right away. Like like I said, this is the sleaziest Bond mm-hmm. movie. It is the most misogynistic. And like it, it I guess they it throw that poor just woman up the feed. window. Yeah, and then they even I'd, he points out the fact I like, didn't know I didn't there, was know there was a pool down there. <laughs> yeah, like he was literally gonna kill her, and then later she's killed in a pool. Mm-hmm. But like you know, and even going back to Goldfinger, like they they were trying to recapture the magic of Goldfinger yeah, with this yeah. one because they brought Connery back, they hired the same director, they had this Shirley Bassett doing the music again, mm-hmm. which I I will say Diamonds Are Forever is, is in my top ten. It is a good Bond theme song. song. It is a good theme song. It's, yeah, it's really yeah. good, um, and way better than that Kanye song. <laughs> <laughs> but. Uh, uh, like, yeah, like they hired as many people as they could mm-hmm. from uh, Goldfinger. Mm-hmm. And it, it's such a different movie. It is. It really is. And uh, like, I yeah. I have a hard time believing this comes from the same director. Mm-hmm. Yeah, just the just it's it, again, it's like we said, it's it's tone is so different from the previous ones. It's it's if those Bond movies were taking themselves seriously, this one clearly is not. Um, and I wonder where that came from. Cause, so Guy Hamilton was the director. He did Goldfinger, and then he did this one, and then the next two with Roger Moore. He did Live and Let Die and The Man with the Golden Gun. Mm-hmm. And The Man with the Golden Gun is another like oh, really kind of cheesy yeah, movie. Yeah, that movie is. Uh, if it wasn't for Christopher Lee, like that movie is. <laughs> I'm No, even with Christopher Lee, that movie is awful. Um, oh, Christopher Lee's kind of hamming it up. Yeah, but it's like, but at least Christopher Lee, like, you y- you know what you get with Christopher Lee, and like he 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 himself can do no wrong. He is he's just he has such a presence and like yeah. a charming malevolence to him that like he is a fantastic Bond villain. But that movie is garbage. It's just straight up garbage. <laughs> like it's got a great premise, but that movie is just straight up garbage. Yeah, it's. I, I would like to see a like kind of modern Bond movie take that same premise, yeah. of, like an assassin yeah. hunting Bond. Yeah, I I, I do like that movie. Mm-hmm. Um, it is it is kind of lower on my list for Roger Moore, but I think Live and Let Die is actually one of his better. Like, oh think, sure, yeah. He has a couple that are a little more serious, and I would say Live and Let Die and The Spy Who Loved Me are kind of like 
top tier Roger Moore, yeah. and then you can kind of just group everything. Exactly. Else that that's most certainly how I feel. Um, yeah, but the Roger Moore time. era definitely is where people bring in the camp mm-hmm. to bond, mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and it it really feels like when I was watching this one that it all started. here. Yes, most definitely. And I don't know, maybe it was because this one made more money than the previous one. Mm-hmm. And, you know, like maybe it was because of just Connery's performance and maybe that's kind of just shaped what this movie Mm -hmm. turned into. And they just decided to run with it. Yeah. And I think just like the whole kind of jet set flavor of the 60s just kind of like went away. And um, I don't know, just this sort of, you know, 70s sort of sensibility and and. I mean, they're very different. They're they're very different film. Like between between the decades, are very different tonally. Um, and like I don't know, like what other kind of movies that came out that were popular that maybe have like influenced the sort of like goofball um, tone of of some of these Roger Moore ones. Yeah, and I was kind of just clicking through these Roger Moore movies to look at the box office returns, mm-hmm. and Live and Let Die did huge. Mm-hmm. It did 160, and then Man with the Golden Gun did like 97, mm-hmm. and then The Spy Who Loved Me is at like 185. Hmm. So the box office is kind of responding the way we are looking at these movies. Yeah. yeah. Like, people like the more serious Roger Moore, it seems mm-hmm. like. And, like, how how... So taking those number, what were the box offices for the two Timothy Dalton ones? Because those were certainly oh, more serious. A um, in fact, uh, a, lot, a lot more violent, too. Living Daylight's 191. Okay. And uh, let's see. License to Kill. which So License to Kill was summer of 89. Mm-hmm. That was Batman, Last Crusade. That's right. it was. Oh, it's It's the summer that, like, oh, man. butchered. Yeah. But... Box off is still 150. Oh, okay, all right. That's that's really impressive. That's not bad. Yeah. God, yeah. The summer of I mean, '89. Yeah. But like, you look at it, and so this movie had a budget of like seven million mm-hmm. and made like 116. Jeez. License to Kill had a budget of 32 and made 156. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. Wow. Yeah, I, <laughs> you definitely feel they the '60s are left behind. Yes. In this movie. Yeah. It is, and you know, this is the first one I think that has a major amount of time in the states. Mm-hmm. Um, Goldfinger goes to the states, but not for very long. It's just, but it's like the the superficial. It's Miami and like Kentucky. Yeah. It's like these kind of like at, at the time these kind of exotic Americana locales. Um, you know, where it's like it's Miami Beach. That that's all you need to say, um, and then like Kentucky, the land of uh, you know bourbon and horse racing, um, these sort of like classic Americana hotspots. But um, yeah, but yeah, I mean, it just it the movies come off le- less exotic um, uh, than than those the, the that initial batch. Um, wow, I just noticed on the. On the cast list because she wasn't famous at the time, so it's listed as a cameo. But uh, Cassandra Peterson was in this movie, who you might know as really, Elvira. really, who was she? She she was a Vegas dancer, oh. and I believe she was in real life at mm-hmm. one point. So she literally might have just right, been yeah. a Vegas dancer, <laughs> and then she you know got a role. That's funny. <laughs> yeah, which you know she just had a book come out, so that's yeah, timely. Yeah. And like they're they put they put uh, the Elvira movie on Hulu. I need to watch that. It's not good. I can't imagine it would <laughs> it's, be. It's really bad. But it's I watched it uh, like a few months ago mm-hmm. or something, maybe a little longer ago. It's I I remember seeing it a bit as a kid, and I was like, oh, you know, I, maybe it's fun now as an adult. It only works because she is so funny right. and like charismatic. Yeah. The movie is yeah. awful, but it's it works because of her. Sure. Um, yeah, and also just the jokes are terrible, yeah. which, speaking of jokes, the stand-up comedian scene in this movie is just God, isn't, the funniest isn't thing. Isn't that just the weirdest thing, too, how, like, he, this, again, it's that it's that bizarre um, sequence in the funeral home, and this dude shows up, he's all yelling at him about diamonds, and then, like, oh, hey, he's a stand-up comic. I'm like, what? 
Like, yeah, what? and it's and I mean, he's telling the worst and jokes. It's like, I, I don't know what they're trying to prove. How it's just like, oh, how the smuggling ring is just like getting all these nondescript people. But again, it's such a non sequitur, you know, that it's like, oh, we yeah, got this it, com- comedian and this elderly school teacher um, as part <laughs> of this international diamond smuggling ring. I I guess it made sense in their head. <laughs> Like is is this one based on a book? Yeah, okay, there is there is a Diamonds Are Forever book. I I wonder if the plot is like the same in the mm. book. Oh, which actually just clicking on the uh the Wikipedia for the the book, the first thing I see is two homosexual thugs <laughs> went and kid. So, in the book they are straight up homosexual. Okay. Well, <laughs> There we Which, go. from my understanding, uh, Ian Fleming writes a lot of thing, like a lot of villains in his books are things like that mm-hmm. because he was not a big fan of that kind of stuff. So, <laughs> so I guess it's I guess it's it's all the more impressive then that they, you know, they could have easily turned up the dial, um, but they didn't. So it's it's yeah. It's I have I have a renewed appre- appreciation. <laughs> For the depiction of those characters, <laughs> which something that I love about this film that kind of ties into those characters is this movie has the best people like reacting with sound effects, mm-hmm. starting from when they put the scorpion in the guy's <laughs> back and just the noise. he just yeah. oh. <laughs> and like. There's a lot of weird just people making noises in this yeah. movie that it's just really funny. <laughs> and like I don't think it was meant to be. <laughs> oh man, yeah, that's right. <laughs> Cuz I think even at the end when uh Bond cuz you know, there's always this is one of like five or six Bond movies where hey, the villain is dispatched, but there's like a henchman still mm-hmm. left to like kind of attack mm-hmm. them. And um, they, you know, they attack him on the cruise ship. But I think Bond like pulls the underwear of yes. one of them, and he's like, "Ooh, yes!" Like as they do it. Yeah, God, yeah. <laughs> like there's, there's like at least five or six moments in this movie of people just like reacting like that. <laughs> Bizarre, fully. Like, I, I just totally wonder if this was on purpose. Mm-hmm. Like I, I would, I, I have this book. I don't know where it is. I'm gonna have to find it. But it is literally a book about the production of the entire James Bond franchise up until, I think, Skyfall? I don't know if Spectre is in it or not. But, um, yeah, like, each chapter is just, like, a different movie. Mm -hmm. And I kind of just want to skip to the... I've never read it, but I want to skip to this movie and just read, like, what was going on. Right, (laughs) yep. But it's also an unofficial style book, so I don't know how much information is actually in Mm -hmm. there. Mm -hmm. (laughs) Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. But yeah, this is it's it's I understand why your first time seeing it, it's 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 kind of a, a shock mm-hmm. of what this franchise has been up until this point. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and I wonder if some people feel that way about Moonraker. Ugh. <laughs> Which I, I like the Roger War movies more than you do, but I think everybody can agree on that. Yeah, I think there's a nice kind of like universal hatred. Um but I mean <sighs> Moonraker's not the, the first time they introduced Jaws, is it? No, he is in The Spy Who Loved Me, and Sorry. he's actually like awesome in that yeah, one. Yeah. He's he's like scary yeah. and then Moonraker kind of turns him into a joke. Yeah. But what a man! What a great concept for a character. Um, yeah. But yeah, no, it's like, hey, if you thought the uh, underwater fight in Thunderball was boring, here is a zero G fight for you. Oh my god, Moonraker is one of the only Bond movies I never want to watch yeah. again. <laughs> and like, I know it has its fans, but I think they like it because it is bad. Mm-hmm. So they they probably understand where I'm coming from. <laughs> but yeah, like it, and I'll say. Thunderball was the other movie on that list, but mm-hmm. after we watched it again, I'm like, you know what? I think I'm kind of on board with Thunderball. See? Yeah, <laughs> and just but, how just how I'm back on board with Diamonds Are Forever. Yeah i I've been having a weird thing this last few years where I've been revisiting movies that I used to think were not kind of great, uh-huh. or I heard a lot of people say were bad, uh-huh. 
and I'm kind of coming to him now being like, you know what? Maybe we just need to watch every movie twice. And you know what? A movie can still be really bad, but if you're enjoying it, that's great. That's fine. Like, yeah. you know, you can you can like bad things. I don't think this is like a good movie. Right. But it's a fun mm-hmm. movie. And I don't know. It's I, a fun, I think, fun movie. Yeah. On top of and that. it does have it does have good Bond stuff in mm-hmm. it. Um, I legitimately, like, I remember watching it the first time, and I was watching it on, like, a handheld device with headphones, so I'm, like, I'm kind of in the experience because I'm holding it on my face, but when he's climbing up the elevator yes. shaft yeah. and into <laughs> the building, I legitimately got, like, anxiety. Right. Because, like, for I'm, I'm heights are not my thing. That, that, that is, did not, like, one thing about that me. That did not happen to me with this, with this recent watch through because, like... I laugh when he does that, especially because he's like, he's standing there and be like, hey, I'm James Bond. I'm on top of an elevator that's going up. Oh, holy crap. Here comes the roof. And I'm like, what did you think was going to happen, man? Like- yeah. <laughs> but it's it's not even so much the part on the elevator. It's the part afterwards where he's trying to, like, climb oh, yes. across the yes. windows of the uh-huh. building. Like, that scene in particular. Like, I, yeah, because it's pretty late in the movie. So, like, by the time I was, the first time I was watching it. You know, I'm like holding the screen right in front of my face and I'm just in this scene and I'm just like, I like I know this is fake, but this is totally working on me and I am feeling the heights anxiety right now. (laughs) Also, the first time I've ever heard of a gun referred to as a hog. Yes. (laughs) Which I that character, um, I can't remember the character's name, but the the Jimmy Dean Mm -hmm. actor um, Willard White, that's Mm -hmm. it. Uh, he, you know, he's kind of this like fake Howard Hughes yes. type character, just this rich guy. He is a lot of fun, mm-hmm. and like just again plays into just like the the cast of characters in this movie is just completely silly, <laughs> and like I think because everybody is kind of working on that level, even Connery is kind mm-hmm. of like outlandish in this one, and I I love how smug he is, like his response to. Jill St. John when she's like, oh, you killed James Bond. And he's like, oh, is that who that was? <laughs> like, like it, it, it totally works. Yeah, yeah it does. <laughs> I, you know, I, I totally, and I'll, I'll say this, this time around, I was a little more bored with it than the first time, mm-hmm. but um, by the time the ending rolls around, I'm, I'm just, I'm all in. Yeah. It's, it's so ridiculous. Yeah. I mean, yeah, it, it, it has its it has its slow moments, but it has its good moments. So, yeah, but, you know, and mo- mo- even even when it's at its worst, like the fact that it's it's kind of just off the rails all the yeah. time keeps it entertaining. It, it, it is endearing. <laughs> it endears itself. <laughs> <laughs> and we've said all this and haven't even mentioned Bambi and Thumper. This right. Time. <laughs> Because, like, of all the ridiculous things. <laughs> yeah, somehow I was like, no, oh, this is actually a cool concept. Uh-huh. It's just, it, just their execution of it feels awkward. Right. But, oh, yeah, God. watching Connery just get, like, beat up by these two women. Yeah. <laughs> like, uh, yeah. No, that, that again, just for, for his, for his, the... Uh, for as often as he's like sleeping around, you know, raping pussy galore, um, <laughs> and yeah, it, it, it is that that sounded so it, bad. But that's what he does. <laughs> I, I mean, that's her name. It's, it's, no, like her name uh, right. with that sentence, <laughs> like out of context. That's what sounds so. You bad. know what, Jeremy? I think these movies might be ridiculous. Uh, <laughs> oh my god, are these misogynists? <laughs> yeah, right. So yeah, so having so seeing Sean Connery get the shit kicked out of him by these two women is is kind of great. But don't worry, he comes out on top, and then he's in a pool with them, and they're like, yeah. "Oh, James." Yeah, and just like shrugging their shoulders, yeah. just, like drowning these two women. <laughs> god, uh, which also the uh, the ever changing casting of felix lighter <laughs> continues in this yep. movie which i can't remember i think it was a, a james bond podcast i listened to but they're like oh it's great that felix is a character that bond always has to like say his name in excitement when he shows up just so you know who he right. is because it's always someone <laughs> different and like not only that but they cast in different ages all the yes time. they do like, yeah he's super old and <laughs> i think um goldfinger mm-hmm. 
And then I also in um, I think Live and Let Die. Mm -hmm. He's like an older actor. But then you look at Doctor No, and it's like this handsome young dude, right, yeah. like kind of the same age as Connery. Yeah. And and I like, think it's it, the same actor for Thunderball too. Yeah, he he did a couple yeah. of them. Um, but yeah, and that's also another uh, character that has been cast with people who have played other people in the franchise, mm -hmm, I believe. Mm -hmm. Like somebody who was like a goon in one movie is Felix Leiter, <laughs> like three movies down. And then Living Daylights comes in where they kill Felix Leiter's fiance. <laughs> yeah, in like the most grotesque and yeah. insane way. Oh no, he gets his and leg. And he gets his off. leg That's bitten off by a shark by the by the bad guy from Goonies. Um, yeah, but I gotta say, <laughs> of, of the of the new Bond, the Craig Bonds, I really do like Jeffrey Wright as as Felix. Oh no, he's yeah. great, and I believe he's in the new one. I think so. I would hope so because then they yeah. well, and then okay, so for the next Bond movies, they totally have to recast him again. That needs to be the yeah. I so I'm I'm seeing the new one tomorrow, mm -hmm. and I've I've very much avoided. I've I've looked at reviews and just seen people say like it's a great ending and it's a great send off, but I don't know what that means. Right. And obviously they're going to recast. I, the question is, do they continue? Like, will they keep these characters, you know, minus Daniel Craig, and just have a new Bond and kind of continue the story? Because that's technically what they did up until Daniel Craig. Like, Pierce Brosnan's right. Bond is still this same James Bond. Mm -hmm. They just, by the time Brosnan had taken over, there wasn't much connectivity there. But I think there's, in one of the Brosnans, there's a reference to him being married. Mm -hmm. Like, if you if you know the lore. Mm hmm, mm -hmm. Yeah, Jeffrey Wright is in the new one. Okay. So, yeah, I hope they keep him around if if they're going to continue that. I I always say I would love for them to uh, do it as a period piece for the next oh, ones. Oh yeah, that'd be cool. Like set it in like the '60s or the '70s mm -hmm. or something. Yeah. That's stop just be stop getting stop being lazy by modern technology. You know. Exactly. That's you know that's that's why those. That's why those older ones can still be endearing because, you know, they made they make do with the technology they had at the time and you know Yeah. I, I it's one of the reasons like from Russia with Love is one of my favorites. Yeah. Is just yeah. because it is so low tech. Yeah. And I still think one of the most greatest escape novelty ideas um is Living Daylights with the little pipeline tube. Uh, they're smuggling yeah. you know, the, uh, of of all the creative ways to get someone from East Germany into West Germany. That's pretty dope. <laughs> yeah, Living Daylights is so underrated. Yeah, it is. It totally is. Um, Dalton in general. I was actually watching Hot Fuzz the other day. I just I love Timothy Dalton. He is so damn good in that. Yeah, just his uh, his introduction. Even just I'm a slasher. <laughs> I've got to be stopped. Like he is incredible. I was the moment he showed up. Like I was completely giddy for the like. It was at that moment that Hot, Hot Fuzz had completely, thoroughly, and deeply won me over. Yeah, I I am very excited for Edgar Wright's new movie. I am also very excited to rewatch Hot Fuzz mm -hmm, all the time. Mm -hmm. Any day, like, any I day I, honestly, week, I think I that might that. be his peak. Yeah, I think so too. Like, good luck ever topping that movie. <laughs> um, but yeah, like he, he uh, Dalton was such a good Bond. Mm -hmm. I, I I would love to. I I love Goldeneye. Goldeneye is like my number two or three Bond mm -hmm. movie. So it'd be hard for me to see it without Brosnan, but I would love to have seen what Dalton yeah. could have done with that yeah. one. Yeah, And, you know, this wasn't Connery's last. No, no. He had he had one he more, gets, technically. He got one more in him. And, uh, but this you know, would, this would some, bring in the, the age of Roger Moore. Um, it would uh, um, bring him back to the States um, with uh, Live and Let Die. Um. Yeah, and that's true. Two in a row mm -hmm, in the states, mm -hmm. and uh, would eventually make Christopher Walken a Bond vi villain. Which why did it take so long? <laughs> <laughs> and why did it have to be that movie? <laughs> I, that's one I need to revisit because again, um, that I watched them all in a marathon, mm -hmm. and maybe by the time I got to that one, I was just kind of over that's, it. That's kind of how I was too. By like um, Octopussy, like I was kind of done. So I barely remember View to a Kill. Um, and yeah. I was like, can we just get to the Timothy Dalton ones already? Please, please, please. 
Yeah. Because I, yeah, I was, I, Spy Who Loved Me is legitimately a good Roger Moore one. But like after that, it's great. It's It's his best one. Yeah. Just, just not interested at all. Thank you very much. Yeah. And I, I like Octopussy the same way I like this one. Mm -hmm. And that it's, it's goofy, but it's fun, goofy. Like that. Cause that's the one with him dressed as a clown at the end, right? Yeah. Yeah, like I feel like once every Bond actor kind of gets to the end of their tenure, they gotta they gotta get some silly mm-hmm, in there. Mm-hmm. And I guess for Daniel Craig, that was probably Spectre because yeah. there's a, there's a little bit of stuff in yeah. that one. <laughs> oh boy! But uh, yeah. Uh, so I, I'm I'm super glad to hear on a revisit you kind of yeah. Got more it, out of it's it. it's turned around. I will say it has turned around. <laughs> yeah, I it's it's certainly. You know, out of what is it, twenty four Bond movies now? Is this new one twenty four or twenty five? I can't remember. I think it's twenty five, but I who who can count these days? Who wants yeah, to count? Like it, it's <laughs> it's certainly in in the bottom. Ooh. But uh, you know, I I love every Bond movie except Moonraker to a degree. <laughs> yes. Yeah. Um, you know, they even, can be bad, but it? you can. There can be things that you like about them. Yeah, and every every actor has one. Like even Dalton, who only had two. Right. Like License to Kill is a pretty wild yeah, movie. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but yeah, like Brosnan has Die Another Day. <sighs> um, I guess Craig defaults to Spectre because I, I I like Quantum. I don't think that's a bad movie, but Honestly, it's certainly like, not, I, like silly. I hated Quantum. It put me off Bond so bad. Um, and I think it. I don't know. It's just maybe it was just a mistake to have it a direct continuation. But like, I just completely like couldn't have been couldn't have faked uh, enthusiasm for it, especially coming off of <laughs> Casino Royale, which I thought was incredible. I think Quantum. The only reason it is seen the way it is is because it's after Casino yes. Royale, which is my favorite Bond yes. movie, and I think a lot of people's favorite Bond movie. I want to watch it again, but <laughs> it's so fucking yeah. good. If if you watch those back to back. Which, you know, you got to carve out like five hours to do it. Um, I think Quantum is a much better movie for mm-hmm. it. Like, when you watch it, because, like, it's all about Bond's character. Mm-hmm. Uh, but I, I think Quantum is very underrated, yeah. and I, I truly hope people kind of revisit mm-hmm. that one. Well, I'll do it just but, for um, you. <laughs> please. <laughs> also, it's the shortest Bond movie. <laughs> it's only an hour 40. Wow. Um, because that one was during the writer strike. That's, I mean, that's why it has the issues it has. Oh, okay. Because they were kind of rewriting it on set. Okay. But um, it's also the artsiest Bond movie. Um, I don't, I don't know if you've heard this stuff, but if you, if you watch that movie, mm-hmm. the the four major action scenes, mm-hmm. I believe four, are all modeled after the Earth elements. <sighs> so the first car chase is earth because they have a car chase and a rock quarry the then there's a boat chase for water uh the plane uh like scene for air and then the final battle in the uh hotel is on fire (laughs) oh god that sounds pretentious but it kind of is, <laughs> but it totally for, for like, a Bond movie. Don't, for a Bond movie, <laughs> very yeah, much so. Yeah. There's also like action scenes with no sound, like dial or like sound cuts out, and it's just music, huh. and it kind of totally works. Like it's it's interesting mm. because this this is a franchise that has never kind of had that kind of pretentiousness right. to it, but it cu- totally works for that movie. Yeah. And then on top of it, it's kind of like a born movie because that that one is definitely the most direct born response. I can't stop thinking about Casino Royale. It's so good. It's so good. It's my. It's in my top five movies of all time. Like I only thought. I always thought like Maverick was the only movie that could get away with a, with just being about a card game, but Casino Royale proved me wrong. Casino Royale is also like two movies in one yeah. because like you have the whole opening of that movie up until the airport scene, and that could be like a movie on mm-hmm. its own, and then it keeps going and it has an even better second movie. There, there have been. I can't. I can't count. A lot of instances where I've been blown away by something in a theater, but um, yeah, holy cow! The how Casino Royale does its gun barrel sequence, 
It's fucking oh my incredible. God. <laughs> I so I when I first saw that movie, I didn't know it was a fucking Bond movie <laughs> at first because like I wasn't super following that uh-huh. stuff, and I just kept seeing the cover on like at like Target and yeah. stuff. And eventually, I was like, "All right, let's." I I I think I looked it up, and I was like, "Oh, it's a James Bond movie." Mm-hmm. Well, like, let's check this out. And I watched Casino Royale and Quantum in like a weekend, mm-hmm. and I was that. Casino Royale just blew yeah. me away. And yeah, that yeah. gun barrel sequence, I was like, uh, oh my god. Like, I could not believe what I was seeing at that time. Because, like, I mean, the, the gun barrel sequence have always been my favorite little Bond thing. And to have it yeah. done that way was just so fucking cool. <laughs> yeah, putting it in the movie yeah, like that. Yeah. Like that... I couldn't believe it. Like something so simple. And it's such a great way to like, hey, okay, here we're taking Bond in a new kind of interesting direction. And what a way to do it. And, um, oh, good. It's on, it's on Prime. Sweet. I know what I'm watching tonight. Um, oh, come on. You don't own it? I, I have it on disc, but these days I'm lazy to like have to oh, go yeah, over to the thing, back. pull out the thing, get the disc, put it in the machine. That's so much work. Have to walk all the way back to the couch. <laughs> you know, forget that the remote was across the room, have to get back up and then have to go. And it's uh. just I'm exhausted just talking about it. Um, oh, you're right. Uh, what was I thinking? <laughs> um, but yeah, no, I, I do have it on oh, disc. Yeah. That duh, Amazon bought MGM. That's right. Oh yeah, because I'm. So looking, they have all the. I'm looking down here. They have all the Bond movies, except for you can't stream Skyfall or Spectre, but they do have. Because uh, I think Sony put those uh, out. Okay, because yeah, here's world is not oh, world is not enough. <laughs> I, again, I'll defend that you know, one. I I I have to say I like world is not enough more than die another day. Oh, absolutely. I think World is Not Enough has a great villain. It's a great plot. Also, one of your first major like female villains, and she's awesome. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. It's just the Denise Richards thing. Right, yeah. But honestly, she's not in the movie that oh. much. So I would argue it's better than people think it is. I really like Tomorrow Never Dies. Also, uh, what's his name? Hagrid from the Harry Potter movies. That's movie. right, uh, yeah. Yeah, he, he's in GoldenEye, and he's in The World is Not Enough. Baker's he's even also better. In Yes, he is. And Tomorrow Never Dies. And a villain in the Dalton movie. Yes, Uh, yes. Not License to Kill, the other one. Living Daylights. Just (laughs) the ongoing recasting of actors in this franchise. (laughs) Love it. I love it. At least in GoldenEye and Tomorrow Never Dies, he was the same dude. Yes, (laughs) yeah. But, uh... Oh, I love the Bond franchise. Me too. Me too. I'm so excited to see the new one tomorrow. I might... It's it's been a long time, so I think I might I might marathon these and then cap it off with with Go See in the last one or the most yeah. recent one I should say. I'm excited. I'm I'm twelve thirty tomorrow. I can't nice. wait. Very nice. Yeah. But, once uh, once Dune comes out, this that I can I will make that my mission. Yeah, I'm I'm so excited for Dune. Yeah, me too. Yeah. Um. But all right. Any any closing thoughts nope. on Diamonds Are Forever? No, nope, nope. uh, again, I was I was <laughs> reluctant to watch it, but came away rethinking my entire worldview about it. So, if that if that is not growth, I don't know what is. I that's the very definition, <laughs> and what I was hoping for, <laughs> and uh, another Shirley Bassey banger yep. to go. Oh out yeah, on. yeah. Hmm. Uh, which yeah, because she did what Goldfinger, Diamonds Are Forever. Oh, and she did Moonraker, mm-hmm. which my one of my least favorites. We can forgive her. Yeah, because Goldfinger also very oh, good. Oh yeah. Um, but all right. Uh, thanks for thanks for coming of back. Of course, thanks thank for you. Chat and bond. Yeah, happy to do so. Yeah. Uh, I I guess you don't really got nothing to promote, right? No. <laughs> you want to shout out your Twitter no. or anything? Um, I mean. <laughs> Yeah, my, my Twitter is just at librarian GMR. Um, right now, it's just a lot of um, pictures of miniatures that I'm painting. But hey, you know. Oh, that's not um, so much fun. If you want to talk to me, that's where I am. Yeah. <laughs> well, all right. Uh, yeah, go go there and share your favorite Bond stories. Yeah. Uh, but all right. I thank you for, for being here. And I want to thank everyone for listening. And uh Go see some Bond movies. Yeah, go see Bond.